Um, I have a question. How can I stay open and present and not get irritated and avoid annoyance when dealing with a constant heartbreak, seeing my mother in pain? So my mom is 84, 85, and I don't think a lot will change. These are crystallized pain patterns, and then they reflect in my dynamic with her, and it breaks my heart over and over again. And obviously, I don't want to push her out of my life because she also needs me. So there's this conflict of my own boundaries or how do I deal with this, witnessing this kind of constant heartbreak? Is it more emotional pain? Or it's emotional pain. I'm just really, I feel so sad seeing her in pain so much. Yeah, I think, you know, when we have... Our, our parents, because we have a soul contract with them as well, it can be really difficult when we're when we're feeling their pain, especially if you're someone who's more of an empath and and you can see the pattern. We have to always remember that they don't see their patterns a lot of times. And even if they do, they don't want to change their patterns because it's so deeply ingrained. And chances are they may not have a spiritual toolbox to actually shift whatever that pattern is, you know, with lack of awareness, with lack of desire, that can get really difficult. What comes to mind to say is that it's beautiful that you can see the pattern. And when we see the pattern, we have a better chance of being able to release the pattern for our own lineage, right? Because there's a good chance that a lot of her pain is an ancestral lineage. There's something that's happened in the ancestral line, something that she learned from her parents. And now that you have recognition on it, and I think a lot of you know that I talk about family constellation a lot because I, I feel that that's such a great way to actually acknowledge patterns and, and pain and, and give them back to our ancestors. Because if we don't do that, then we suffer. And that's what I'm hearing from you is like, how do I like step out of my suffering seeing this? And I think it's, it's, you're doing it already by, by acknowledging the pattern and then allowing yourself to release it. And I think one of the ways to release it is you could do a family constellation and you could um, have some support to, to actually release that. But I also think that just really sitting in a sense of the word pride comes to mind. And, and I think pride from the standpoint of I've done my work and I know that, that this is a pattern that I could take on, but I'm not, or I still have it a little bit and I want to release it. And so just having that real awareness around it, I think is going to help you see your mom for just who she is and what she's in and for you to not experience it as someone who's more empathic and someone who can, can, um, yeah, see things from a bigger picture. But when we give it go up even just like another notch, I guess is what I'm being shown to, to almost like just sprinkle the situation with love, you know, like where, where you just, you, you look at the pattern and I'm speaking very like etherically in a sense where you, you know, the pattern in your mind and you see the behavior in real time, but you just take it up like another level of consciousness and then take these sprinkles of light and just ask that light to just dissolve whatever it is. Now, it doesn't mean that your mom is going to completely change her behavior. She may, but, it, but we don't want to set that expectation. But it's, it's like a sprinkling to allow it to diffuse within you so that you can release it, so that you can release the feelings that you feel within yourself when you observe it. And of course, if your mom is someone who might have a little desire, you could do some work with her one-on-one um, -on -one and actually talk about, hey, mom, you know, when you do this, it really makes me feel this way and I want to help you. But if, if you're not willing to have the awareness around it, then it's creating, it's creating this situation. So I'm just suggesting like whatever those, you know, those sound bites are, that you bring the awareness to her. And that you bring the awareness to how it makes you feel, not from a blame, just from a, hey, like I'm shining the light on this. This is, this is the truth that I feel in my heart. This is what I see. And if she's not someone that's at all receptive to that, I get that. A lot of times our parents don't, don't want to change. And so if that's the case, then I would just keep going back up to this higher level in your meditations. Um, when you're with her, just envision all these sprinkles coming down and, and just envision that it's dissolving. 
emotionally for you. And I think you're going to see, because, okay, we know this. We know that our external world is just a reflection. And so when we change our internal state about it, that's when stuff starts to change on the outside. So especially when we do it without the expectation, if we expect someone else to change, chances are they're never going to do it. But when we actually can shift that emotion within us, then we start to see they go, oh, well, I guess that wasn't really that big of a deal or, oh, uh, all right, well, that, that doesn't have to be that. You know, not knowing what the details are and the nuances, I think you're going to start to see that shift externally when you dissolve your own emotion around yeah, the action or the behavior that you're that you're witnessing with that parent. All right. Is there any additional was that helpful or I'm happy to 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 clarify any more if there's something else or is that okay. Okay, great. I would love for you to go on to bethbell.me and take the state of the heart assessment. If you haven't already, you'll find out like what state is your heart in? Are you blocked? Are you are you broken? Are you healing or are you whole? And even when we're in our whole hearts, we never know what's going to happen in life and things can, can break our hearts. And that's where a spiritual toolbox really comes in and is incredibly helpful and handy. And it requires us to do that deep inner, inner work, the work that sometimes gets tough to do when our lives are busy and crazy, but guaranteed if we don't do the pause, life is going to pause for us and, and push us into those moments where we have to do that work. On bethbell.me, you'll also see the Awakening and Healing Handbook. There's lots of modalities, lots of tips, tools, techniques um, that can also help you on your spiritual journey and building that spiritual toolbox. If you have any interest in spiritual medicines, there's the psychedelic uh, resource guide that's also very helpful. Um, even if you have someone else in your family that might be interested and you're like, why are they even considering this? I think that would be a very helpful tool for you. And there's the herpes handbook. And I know everybody's like, ah, but it's also about the viruses of the mind and, and really moving through some of these heartbreaking situations that happen to us in life. And herpes does not have to be that. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely something that is perceived to be this tragedy and trauma. And I honor that, but it's something that we can all work through because they are viruses of the mind. So I so appreciate you here. Uh, if you're listening live, thank you for being with me. If you're listening on replay and you have a question, please don't hesitate to submit either in the comments or you can go to bethbell.me slash question. And I look forward to seeing you again next week at 11, 11 a.m. on Sundays. Until then, wishing you much bliss and love. Namaste.